Everybody, welcome back to the Red Bull Team Brawl. I'm standing by with the team captains for the teams for the next match. It's uh, Andre from Temple Storm, or Reyna, as you guys may know him, and of course, uh, Savitz from Team Liquid. I'm going to start off, I'm going to go right to you, Reyna. Uh, you were instrumental in the creation of this tool. Um, how much influence did uh, your experience with other card games like Magic influence the creation of, of course, the sealed tool? I mean, a, a pretty good amount. You know, I played a good amount of sealed over like seven years of, of Magic and kind of had a decent like feel of what I wanted the tool to do and yeah you know we with the help of like uh, Kaparian, Rania, all the players here everyone testing it we kind of polished the numbers on cards so I think it feels pretty good right now and definitely encourage people to try it out on the website. Yeah well it's uh, super chaotic uh, and it's fun to watch you know the three matches happening at one time. Uh, do you think the, the practice that you gain with it and of course being involved with the development helps you uh, have an edge going into the to the matchups? Uh, I mean, I think so, but, you know, every player here is pretty great, and a lot of it's going to come down to uh, just being able to work properly as a team, kind of distribute cards between the three decks the right way, and uh, a bit of luck, of course, because that's how Sealed works, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I don't think we have too much of an edge. But, yeah. yeah, well, it's super exciting seeing the first matches and how that draft works out, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how your guys are. So, Savita, I'm going to come to you next. Uh, you've been around the competitive Hearthstone scene for a long time, since pretty much the beginning. Um, how do you feel about this sort of new format coming into Hearthstone? I think it's absolutely awesome. I think it's refreshing. There's always been uh, uh, only constructed there are some arena events, but those are really rare, and this is somewhere in between. I think it's closer to arena than it is to constructed, but it's such a fun format, and playing as a team is also gives a new layer to, to competitive Hudson. Yeah, so uh, I talked to Reynad about how you know, he was involved in development and uh, has experience with it. Have you had a chance to play around with the sealed tool, or were you involved with the, the testing of it at all? How, are you, how comfortable are you feeling going into like, the draft and the deck building? I wasn't involved in the, in the making of the tool or anything like that, but we did play around with it yesterday quite a bit as a team, and we were uh, doing quite well, even though I say it myself. I'm really happy with how the team is functioning as a, as a whole, and I think that I, our uh, chances are really good. Okay, good to hear. And uh, Raynad, I'm going to come to you with uh, sort of predictions. Uh, what, what teams are you expecting to do well? Uh, of course, besides your own, and I know you're coming into this probably pretty confident, uh, but what teams or what players are you specifically looking forward to have a big edge in this format? I mean, early on in the format, we thought that the players experienced with Arena would do the best, like Hafu, Trump, but um, according to Hafu, it's closer to Constructed, so you know, it really is up in the air. I think there are no weak players here, and a lot of it's just going to come down to team synergy more than anything. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would give uh, Liquid as a good chance. Not in this match, but the other one. <laughs> All right, and Savitz, what do you have to say for that predictions going into this match and moving forward in the tournament? Oh, we'll just see. I mean, I'm, I'm going to let the, like the, the Hearthstone games th do the talking, and once we crush them, it's just uh, that's it, right now it's going to look a bit silly after that statement. All righty. Well, with those words, I believe it's time that for us to jump into the match. We've got to shake hands, and we'll send it over to the casting desk with Frodan and Hyped. Thank you very much, TJ. That's what I want to see, Hyped. I want to see these guys talk more than just, ah, have a good game, because there's a lot of pride on the line as well. Uh, when, you, when you talk about Hearthstone, it's, it's a lot about the encompassing feeling of being able to do everything in your strategy, not just the ability to play the game, but also the way you can prepare with deck building and stuff. So I'm extremely excited to see what we have in store with Tempo Storm vs. Liquid. Definitely. I know Raynad's faced Savitz quite a bit, and he's usually a little upset with how the results yeah. go, so... Maybe it'll be the same, maybe it'll be different. All right, now we recognize that some people, they took a little bit of a break. Let's refresh the memories and see what we have so far in the standings. We saw Team Archon take on Cloud9, where it was a very close match, even though we saw you know, a little bouncing back forward here and there. Team Archon was able to take the edge five to four, giving them a match one victory. Now, the big thing that's important is that you're gonna be playing round robin. There's no elimination brackets. All you have to do is just win as much as you can. We take the match score as the people who will be advancing further, and the game score is a tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the match score, 5-4, it's not that a big deal that they lost. It's just more important that they got those wins, and they worked as a team, and they're gonna to continue to do that as it goes on. All right, so with Team Liquid versus Tempo Storm, as you get ready for the draft portion of the event, uh, keep in mind that it's it's kind of a, an interesting amalgamation of a lot of characters here. It's not just the, the pure form of Tempo Storm. It's Tempo Storm with a special guest hyped. It's yeah. Firebat, who was earlier this week, not five days ago, he was on Team Archon. What was up with that? That was crazy. There's a lot of drama there. Um, so, but he's filling in for me on the Tempo squad, and I'm happy about that. And plus, like I said before, there's like a lot of different strategies for the drafting, and I know Firebat and Raynad both have like very similar mindsets 
where it's all about stats and curve. Yeah, and then you also have people who like to feel out the game as well. Uh, Team Liquid is definitely one of those people. I know Savitz, for example, he's not necessarily a person who goes off of scientific... Uh, let's just say mathematical approach, but he's more of a scientific guy where he likes to play with cards a lot, get a lot of experience, know all the small nuances. If you watch their streams, for example, Dog, even Trump and, and Savitz, they love tinkering with decks a lot. Uh, and one thing that I also really enjoy about Team Liquid Synergy, too, is that they also go really far back. You see Dog and, and Trump, they played on a team before in the Archon Team League pat last year on Team Value Town. And, of course, Savitz goes all the way back with uh, Team Liquid for a while now. So I'm really interested to see how that dynamic continues to flesh out over the day. Yeah, I like to see their teamwork, too. You see, like, we were watching the other day, Trump was, like, trying to make some decks with, like, some big ideas and a lot of value, and Trump, or Dog and Savitz were just grounding them. They're like, Trump, that's never going to work. It's way too slow. Don't do it. All right, here we go. Christmas came early. The packs are opening, and we're going to see who is going to be the ones getting the more fortunate cards. However, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, Hyped, we just saw not an hour or two ago, we, we saw Cloud9 being able to open up, you know, yeah. Dr. Boom. Tons of legendaries. But they still didn't even win the series. So it doesn't mean everything just because you have good cards. Your team lineup, how you s distribute cards is also a really important thing. And the teamwork is important, too. Uh, we were thinking the teamwork was just going to be for, like, you know, the drafting and the building of the decks. But we saw a lot of teamwork with helping each other out with plays. Yeah discussing like what cards were seen, what cards could be in the opponent's hand, stuff like that. It's yeah. really cool to see. One of my favorite moments was watching a turn one struggle from Strife Crow, right? Should I coin out this knife juggler? Should I oh, go yeah. for the huge toe, which is a little bit safer? I don't throw my knife juggler in the fray. Do I just go with a web spinner on turn one? Uh, and there was like a minute and a long half debate. It was almost like watching life coach play. Oh, yeah. Classic right? crow. Classic crow. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I, I don't really see too many things. I was keeping an eye on legendaries uh, for Liquid. I haven't seen thank any. Thank you. I actually couldn't take I my, see my one gaze star. too much. In the, but I can't quite see what it is. Okay. Well, uh, the most important thing when you're looking at class evaluation that I found in this format is how are the cards distributed across each expansion's power level? So, for example, one class that I thought we see a lot is Mage, because in mm -hmm. every expansion, it feels like Mage got a little bit to help them, versus in some expansions, there were some big losers. You know, for Hunter, for example, doesn't really have much in expansions, but it has a lot of core set. So if you're all in on having like a very strong base, like Rogue, Hunter, even um, you know some other classes struggle with expansions. It's going to be tough to build out more consistently, but that doesn't mean it's impossible to see them. Yeah, it's all about that flame strike that was in the basic set. Yeah, if you don't get exactly. it. Exactly, don't get it. But I mean, and Blizzard's still really powerful, uh, and, and you know, it's not impossible to see other classes like Rogue. I'm just, it's, it's going to be one of the less common classes that I see. Yeah, we saw a lot of uh, teams like in the f first draft. They were like, lean. They wanted to build Rogue, but they just couldn't put it together. Right. Like, I guess we can't do it, and they scrapped it. Even in this format, hyped. Yeah. Rogue yeah, is yeah. still unplayed for now. We'll see. I mean, we, we have yet to see the entire distribution of cards. I'm seeing a lot of clash choices on early curve, which is really important. I think a lot of teams are expanding on the idea that early game plays is very important just mm -hmm. because you want to command tempo from the beginning. And that often dictates, you know, if you have cards in the very beginning to play, then you can continue to have impact later on, but you might just die if you don't get to that point. Here we see Liquid on their final pack, which is generally the best pack. Or I guess it went in a different order. It looks like it's basic. It's very indicative of the future, right? You want to open up very good cards. I mean, there are some very powerful soulbound cards that you get. And when we say soulbound, we mean cards that you get for just leveling your classes in the very beginning stages of Hearthstone, which is free to everybody. Uh, everybody has access to these cards, like Whirlwind, Deadly Poison, Shadow Word Pain. Uh, you know, and one thing that you also want to consider, too, is about how all these cards mix in with distribution, because you might get an unfortunate situation. We saw two Frostbolts just now. If they pick up a third one, they can't use that third yeah. one. Yeah, there's a Fireball, though. That's always good. Fireball is, is almost universally accepted as uh, a really good and, and really annoying card. Like I don't think anybody no, uh, has, has a very 100% uh, pure feeling about it. It's always a mix, like, oh, I love Fireball, but I also hate it. Yeah. All right, so the, the packs are opened. Uh, we have tinkered with the numbers a lot. A big shout-out to uh, Rania from uh, Team Crypt there. She helped us tinker with these numbers a lot with the testing period, as well as all the players here spearheaded by Raynad and crew. So, you know, go ahead and looking at some of these early classes and cards. You know, one thing that's a really easy way to do the eye test, the eyeball test, is to see how many cards you actually get. Sometimes in these sealed openings, you only have two rows of cards, and it's like, well, I don't really have much to play with here. Yeah, and it looks like Liquid's going with the strategy yesterday, just putting all the classes one by one instead of kind of eyeballing and deciding on three or four. It looks mm -hmm. like Liquid's just going through Druid, Hunter, as you can see. They'll open up the class, pick the mage. Yeah, they're just going to do them all. I guess it doesn't take that much extra time. And it's just a better way to visualize if you're a visual thinker. Oh, that's a really good point. I love the fact that Liquid is systematically breaking it down. It feels like... Uh 
Trump influenced, if you, oh, if you will. I, because, yeah. you know, it feels like more of his type of analytical style, don't you think? Yeah, I think Dog and Savitz were like, does this take too long? Should we do a little quicker? And I think Trump was like, <laughs> no, no, trust me. All right, well, we're looking at Team Liquid, and they, I mean, they Conjure. have some pretty decent mage cards. You look at cards like Frostbolt, Flame Cannon, Fireball, they're good for board control. Of course, like you said, Ethereum Conjurer, a card that was slept on in terms of value, but extremely powerful. Yeah. Even Fallen Hero is great. You see them instantly put two in. Dragon That's Consort, right. we might see another Dragon Paladin. You know, a lot of people were kind of think, were raging, like, if anything can happen is a card that can be opened up much more likely because with less cards in an adventure compared to an expansion, you're likely to pull it. But I don't think we'll be seeing any Murloc decks. I don't think so either. They're pretty hard to make. They're pretty you gotta, awesome, you got a lot of weird cards. I think it's because the Murloc War Leader and Murloc Guy are too rare. Mm -hmm. Too rare. Priest is a class that I think is also slept on this format in the sense that it's, it's very easy to open up a very good set of priest cards in goblins versus gnomes they've gotten valence chosen they've gotten dark cultist and nax ramus you know this gives an op opportunity for opening up a lot of packs and a lot of good cards you know in tomb light bomb all of them are spread out yeah priest was kind of the deck we saw like in a lot of the practice runs where it's like it wasn't what you thought about first but it's like hold on we actually have some pretty good priest cards and like almost every team actually ended up with the priest as we saw like yep yeah we're on uh, Andre Yanyuk, Reynad's POV for Temple Storm. They're looking at uh, a lot of the classes almost similar to Liquid. It looks like they're going a little bit slower, though. They're just evaluating slightly more. So you can see some card overlap there, right? The, the anything. But, I mean, this is one of the classes that I'm looking at right here. Rogue seems to be very interesting. A lot of people are split on their opinions. Double Cold Blood, just going for that burn. Maybe they're going to do an egg, Rogue. We saw a lot of egg use today. Yeah. That Assassin's White instantly put in. Mm -hmm. No oil, though. That's... All right, well, let's go ahead and listen in to Tempo Storm, see what they're talking about specifically with their classes, how they're choosing priorities, and how they're discussing it. Yeah. This Shaman deck looks nuts, though. I think we can skip Warrior now. And Feral Spirits. I don't like Warrior. Rumbling Elemental as a card, personally. All right. This All right. No. Uh, fourth Landing's very not good. Oh. It just has the limiting factor that you need two random enemies. Okay, this actually looks solid for the most part. Mm. Like just the early no, game no of the flame bomb. imps and the imp gang bosses are no. so sick. But <laughs> like the double imp gang boss okay. coming down on three every time is disgusting. Demon wrath. Demon wrath with our early curve is not bad. Yeah, that's no, fine. Uh -huh. I'm I warlock really, looks good. I really hope I don't accidentally click that button. Uh, this is actually no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't shield like mains this. are insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you'd we, actually we rather have Boulder Fist. Shield Slam. I haven't got anything to combo with Shield Sh Sh Maiden. Uh, yeah, I mean, but it allows you to make like a late curve deck if you wanted to, but I don't know. All right. Oh, all right, okay. so we have one of everything, so let's just overview all the neutrals first before we look at the class cards so yeah. we have something to bounce it off of. All right, so taking a look at uh, how Tempo Storm was bouncing off there, I mean, they're taking a very similar approach to Liquid. So yeah, I like it. It feels like when they've practiced a little bit, they can understand it. I, I, I like this very methodical approach to, to drafting here. Yeah, I'm definitely all for, like, the overview, take everything in, then make a decision. All right, well, we've listened a little bit to Tempo Storm. Let's go into Camp Liquid and see what the mayor of Value Town yeah, and Team Liquid are saying. That we shouldn't. Shaman. That's just mediocre. Yeah, pretty mediocre. Let's not play that. Rogue is like, Rogue I, I is think fine. we can make this happen yeah. with the Raptors and like eggs and activators. Yeah, we had a, quite a good amount yeah, of Yeah, and like eggs Assassin's and Blade and yeah, Double. I think we'll be good. Yeah, yeah. just Rogue. keep Rogue. Definitely Rogue, definitely Druid. So let's start with building Let, Let's start building the yeah, Druid yeah, yeah. and the Rogue. Okay, so let's start with the Rogue. Get rid of Dragon. Yeah. Okay, let's go through this. Zombie channel, right, probably. So we want to start with the eggs and the egg activators. Mm -hmm. Okay. So type in battle card. Start for Death Rattle. Death Rattle. Because the Death Rattle cards go in here, basically. Um, in Blood Mage, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shiva and Blood Mage. Yeah. And Blood Mage and Loot Hoarder. Yeah, L Loot Hoarder. Loot Hoarder. Right there. Creeper, Egg. probably. Maybe. Egg. It might go into Hunter if you, if it's you true. play that. Put the Creeper for now. And okay. one Belcher, probably. Yeah, at least. Belcher. We have three total. Next yeah. page. Um, next page. Possibly go to Battle Cries. Oh, yep. Wobbling Runs, possibly. We have an Uber Rock. There's no way. That's like infinite value. Yeah, Aside from Assume. Uh, okay. Farseers are okay in Rogue. Yeah. I know it's not Oil Rogue, but like at least one. We should play at least one. I, I agree. It's missing some three drops too. This looks like going struck. All right. Well, you know they have a new Barak in Rogue, and I may have sp spoken too soon. Hyped. I I semi introduced <laughs> yeah. a death sentence. 
I feel bad about it because I was like, no one's going to play Rogue. But you know what? They're very convinced on it. And I like a lot of those cars. They have two oils. They have a flurry. You know, they have the new rock for the late game. You know, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. You were talking about how rogues don't get that many cards, but you forget about the cards that are actually pretty good in Arena, like Skulker and maybe a Nubarak and maybe uh, the Raptor is great. They're building That's the true. whole deck around the Raptor. Actually, you're completely right about that. I was evaluating it from a constructed point of view, and this is where being able to understand Arena and individual card value is really important. Rogue has Dark Iron Skulker, and even cards like Buccaneer, you know, it's yeah. slept on, but it's pretty good. And we've also seen cards that have a lot more value than people can completely see in the big picture, like Pit Snake is one of them. I know a lot of people talking a lot about it. Pit yeah. Snake. And so you're absolutely right. I actually stand corrected. I take back my words. Rogue it can be a pretty good class here. The only reason why is I think we haven't seen much of it in our testing phases, nor have we seen it uh, in Archon vs. Cloud9. However, I love to see Rogue. I love to see diversity because a lot of people were wondering, is Mage just going to be played in every series? Yeah. I'm a little worried, though, that all these, uh, everyone's, like, super optimistic about their eggs. And as we can see, like, <laughs> it doesn't look like Temple Storm has, like, well, maybe they haven't made a decision yet. But, like, based on that Rogue deck, what kind of egg activators do they have? Is Raptor an egg activator? Not really. They, they passed on the Cold Bloods. Mm -hmm. It's AoE protection, but how much AoE is there? We right. saw in the last match there was, like, one Flame Strike total across two mages. No Consecrates. Nothing like that. Yeah, there was a Blizzard, I think. But it was a Blizzard. If it's, if it's three cards out of 90 that yeah. has AoE, it's it's not really that much and reliable. Uh, you know, but there are sometimes the, the impact of knife jugglers or if your opponent picks up bomb lobbers, really premium types of way to grab tempo, this then they sometimes can activate the eggs themselves. I, I am definitely in your camp. I love taking proactive stuff. Bomb lobber, by the way, seen over there, almost certain that it'll go into a tempo deck. Hunter is also a class that I think... People are not really thinking about much these days because it also does it does poorly in both formats that we mm -hmm. primarily see. Constructed and Arena, Hunter is known to be pretty weak. Yeah, I'm struggling to see like the the theme of this Hunter deck. Is it just an aggro deck? Well, you have Ball of Spiders. Yeah, not but exactly ignoring the, most the Ball aggro, of Spiders, but which I, everyone says is a great Arena card. You generally do want an early curve. Hopping back over to Team Liquid, they're building out that Druid deck with a couple of cards that I personally feel are, are pretty good. The first, of course, is uh, the Ancient of War. People look at that as one of the big daddies of the card, but I also really love Mech Bear Cat. Mech Bear People Cat. look at that card and they say, hmm, dies to Big Game Hunter or you know, very easily manipulated in, in a constructed format, but Mech Bear Cat actually can bring extreme amounts of value with good trades and continues to give your card count some extra mileage based off the spare parts. We even have that fossilized dinosaur, Devil Sore, that's activated by the Mech Bear Cat. It looks like they don't want to put in the Is druid it? quite yet. Yeah, it's a beast, right? Uh, I, think, I believe it's a mech. Is it not a mech and a beast? You can't have Is it. Is it both? That, uh, that would be not. surprising. I guess it's just a mech. I mean, I, it makes complete sense mm -hmm. in the sense that... Um, you know, a bear and a cat are beasts, but I believe it is categorized as a mech, which means if you use mech buffs or mech warper, it should be the case here. Yeah, we see them deleting that, honey. It didn't look that good. I'm yeah. not surprised. I like that Druid deck, though, and that was when we were listening in, they were like, Druid, definitely. We're mm -hmm. definitely doing Druid, and it makes yeah. sense. Well, I definitely want to listen more into what they're saying. It looks like Temple Storm has a more painful process here of eliminating, so let's go ahead and tune into what they're saying. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. think that's okay. And Warrior sucks. Warrior just sucks in general, yeah. Uh huh. Uh, all right, so so go can... back through them all. We gotta get down to three, right? We still have yeah, six. Yeah. The thing I like about Warlock is we have double Nerubian Egg, which is basically a Warlock class card. Yeah, with we, our set. we got Power of Warming, double Hellfire. Demon Wrath. Demon uh -huh. Wrath. Yeah, definitely put the eggs in there. Uh, if the eggs are going in there, then we might as well put the abusives and the Lance Carrier in yeah, there, right? Yeah, Lance Carrier. I like Druid too, actually. I, okay, so Priest is how's Priest? Priest is pretty solid. Holy Champion's insane, Dark Cult is insane, Velen's mm -hmm. insane. Uh, we're going to need a strong two-drop curve if we're going to have this, Velen's This deck has 13 cards. Druid has 16. But some of the Druid ones are kind of pushing it. Like I think Druid, Druid and Priest will pick one of them. Uh, because Hunter, they're pretty similar. Hunter has like 22. I think but Ball we have neutrals in here. Yeah, Ball of Spiders has got to go for it. Is, you guys right. really think that's a good card? <laughs> I think it's fine. It's actually like... Not it's a little bit slow. I mean, if two out of three say it's good, then put it in. But I'm... Not proud of Mage it. I don't like. We have 14 cards. Only like half of them are actually good. Sure. But yeah, mm -hmm. Darlin' mm -hmm. Esperance kind of mm -hmm. suck. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not as good as Hunter. It's not as good as Druid. It's not as good as Priest. So. All right, so Shaman is good. Warlock. Shaman's definitely we have to play. And I think Warlock with the eggs, you made a good point. That's just insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, just being able to make free 4-4s four is going to be insane. Man, a lot of debate. I, and Temple Storm has a lot of solid decks. I don't think there's any card that stuck out to me as, like... 
the Doctor Boom. Yeah. Of it, you know, I, I don't really see any of it, but maybe uh, my eyes were fooling me. Did you see anything hyped? Uh, no, but that Chowan deck looked pretty solid, and I'm glad they took the Ball of Spiders out. I don't have much faith in that card <laughs> either. Looks yeah. like Firebats on our side with it. Like, what is that Ball of Spiders doing? I mean, Ball of Spiders has a lot of value if the game can go that long, but yeah, there's you also play it on six. Yeah, and they have to die. That's true. And yet, what if you get like oddly mana things that you can only play one each turn? Mm -hmm. One of them's a boar. Right, or or you get all of them and they happen to do nothing. I, I think it's the expected value of what you can ex what you can get in return for playing Ball of Spires is too unpredictable to the yeah, point where that's just you might slower as well just than like a discover yeah. card, for example. Yeah, you might want to streamline your efforts, and that's why when Amaz says something like Tomb Spider, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, lower mana cost, definitely. similar stats, get you something just that you one can kind card of play that for. you discover, you get to pick. It's a lot more choice based. All right, oh, they actually well, did get an oil for that Assassin's Blade. Is that what I'm saying? There did they? Yeah. Let's take a look at Team Liquid and see a little bit closer how that rogue deck is shaping up. We have sure. sent you later. Okay. No mish. Yes, this should be good in this. All right, let's uh, go on the mage. Both? Both? Yeah, go to the mage. Yeah. Okay. Class cards. The oh, fallen right. heroes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. For sure. Double torch mirror. Hmm. I think we, I, are we going to want to run Mirror Entity and two Scientists, or no, that's not enough? One Scientist, right? One Scientist, one Mirror Entity. Yeah. Okay. You don't think that's consistent enough? I think it's fine. But is this really so bad? Like, they no, that's they terrible. Pretty that's pretty bad. Okay. Well, fine. That's one of the other secrets, so we can play both of the <laughs> Scientists. Conjure, no, no Blast Mage. No oh, yeah, no Blast because we don't have the mechs. All right, so uh, let's What's go to coast? Druid. I think Druid's the deck that wants to... No, no, I don't need the chow, so Mage takes the chow. Yeah, Mage probably needs chow boost. Yeah, I think so, though. We need to start on turn one, because this is like the. Oh, Lowly Squire is actually pretty sick in Mage. Uh, yeah, I agree. Maybe we want to put the Blood Mage. Yeah, yeah Rogue, of course. But there's like a lot of spells here. Okay, okay missile, double two, missiles. Two, three, that's true. five, seven. And torches. Two yeah, torches. That's eight things. Let's, let's so, check Rogue. How many okay. things? Back Wave stab, death back stab, shiv. Three, shiv. Oh, that's true. Man, we need to put Kabir's Raptors. Yeah. We need to put it there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Man, I could listen to those guys talk all day, just discuss. It's really interesting, but it's so funny. It's like, I, I want to play the torches. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about That's that rogue deck. So many weapons that are, or so many weapon buffs for that mm -hmm. Assassin's Blade. And that a new Barak. I'm going to guess Dog's probably going to be playing the Rogue. Yeah, I'm assuming that as well, because Dog is a very well-known Rogue player. Uh, I think Rogue... Druid probably is another class mm -hmm. that dog's been in the druid. past. Yeah. In the past, it was it wasn't even the druid that people see now, the modern incarnation of it. But it's the ramp druid in the past that dog used to pilot to very high ends of legend. That would leave Saviz on mage, which is also a very uh, expected value yeah. or expected um, is a result there, just because Saviz is known for being able to pilot a lot of really strong decks overall. He's more of a breadth player, not a depth. Exactly. Versus dog and Trump more specialized in stuff. Yeah, dog only plays mage if there's major yeah. demo in it. Meanwhile, Temple Storm still on five decks, and you know, half their time is almost up, so they have to start really narrowing down and refining. We often see a trend with the players. The more they are familiar with this tool, uh, what happens is the first 10 minutes or so are often the, the easiest, because it's like, well, these cards we have to play, and then the last 20 is to decide on the last 20% of cards, right? Yeah. So it's like the last like five, six, seven cards you debate for 20 minutes. It's so hard. There's actually a big difference between Cloud9 and Archon, whereas uh, Cloud9 built, they're, they'd spent uh, less than 10 minutes to decide on the decks, then they built them really quick, and then they spent the last 15 to, to really uh, pick at the decks and make them perfect, whereas Archon was just a slow and steady build, and it was just a steady rate, and they finished by the end. Yeah. And worked out for them, I think. I mean, they have a pretty decent amount of hunter cards. When you have things like Mad Scientist, Secrets, uh, with, with, by the way, Dart Trap, uh, that's a really interesting card. I, I don't know. It's pretty good. It's like five random damage. It's, even if it hits face, you're not that sad. Yeah, because it's Hunter's hero power. It usually hits, hits like, face, too. You want to kill them anyways. Yeah. Is this, wait, is this a... Steam Window's pretty solid. Animal Companion's always good. Eagle Horn Bow's always good. I was gonna say, is that a Jeeves? In I don't know. It? Which I've made never, me think maybe there's more mechs, but I don't. I don't see any mechs. I've been disappointed with Melted Leaper every single time, <laughs> but I know Ryan Ed's a fan of it, so I'm guessing that's his doing. Yeah, it's like Savage Orb, but for mechs. Yeah. Except you don't get to attack with your face, it's and you don't a boar, always have Savage Boar in the deck on purpose. I like that. <laughs> it's not so bad when you have Double Houndmaster. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I mean, some of these things that uh, were very interesting to me during the testing phase was what kind of decks that these guys were looking at. I know Reyna was telling me that during testing, he saw a legitimate ability to build a desert camel hunter. But he was like, no one else wanted to do it, just me. And I'm like, well, Reyna, it's probably better off that you didn't do it that way because he ended up going 
Yeah, you got to get the Calvadiers, and you got to get two. Doesn't yeah, really work with anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. It's cool synergies all across the board that we don't really see that some of these players are able to bring out. You know, who knows if we're able to see, you know, the, the obvious synergies are like Mad Scientists and Secrets and Ruby and Eggs and Buffs, but what about other cards that we don't really pay attention to that much? Yeah, so Druid was like, they're, we're definitely building Druid deck, but actually mm -hmm. it's just an Ancient of War, an Innervate, and like one Nourish. I don't know yeah. if that's enough. Well, Nourish is really good for the late start stages of the game because it's very easy to run out of cards, but I want to see specifically what they're debating on because now we're getting to the real nitty-gritty of how they flesh out each deck. Can you uh, search so for Dragon? Yeah, we might want to... I think we might have to. I'm not too excited about it, but... Oh yeah, my god, it's, it's like Mex and... <laughs> oh, let's see... You can yeah. like scout up a, a Mech or... A dragon, then it <laughs> Oh my god. No, I don't think this is going to work out. Yeah, we can't yeah. do dragons. This is actually, no. We, we just have to count. go for value on the higher drops. Yep. Yeah. So okay, just try so to let's curve look for twos. Higher. Yep. Uh, Could put a lowly squire in the druid deck as well. Times yeah, one. or mage. Or mage, yes. Oh yeah, mage would probably use. But we have two. We can put one on one if you want. It's just like, it's leaving. Oh, there's two raven idols. Raven idols. I have so much to do on one. But yeah, you have double claw. Okay. So just put it on mage. I would mulligan claw though. So, let's see. Oh man, this is so low in value. Uh, well, you have double scarab. You're going to be fine on value. I'm almost sure. Just you can get like duplicates and stuff. Yeah, I think you want both squires even. Yeah, you should put both okay. in. I agree. Okay. All right, start getting the high drops to uh, mage and druid then. Yep. Should be. It's almost like enough stuff. Go to seven plus oh, mage. Yep. Force uh, tank. Force the tank. There's one in the sword. druid right now, so I think we put one in the mage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe storm one champion is good enough in mage. Might um, be. Uh, there's not that many minions, though. Fossil Wars Double sure. Sword is pretty good as well. I mean, it's an 8 mana 8 8. So it's double good. Eight. Mm. I would almost rather have like one Stormwind than one. Because I don't want to draw like both okay. of the 8s. Okay. I think that's uh, fine. Uh, what does this have good of? This Freeze. has good late game, 6 games. Oh, why don't we just. Uh, I like Shaman Warlock. Let's just cut both I, Priest and Druid, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I like Shaman Warlock better, too. We decided Hunter, I guess, over it. Can't really turn back on that now. Time constraints. All right, so battle cry, yeah. Yeah, battle cry. We need the things to buff the eggs since we're running double eggs. So that a lance carrier might be good enough. We got BGH combos with two of the cards in the deck already, so it's probably the best BGH deck. Um, we've got MC tech, which is better in the deck. It's going to be behind, which I guess would be shaman. But shaman's uh, not going to be behind either. <laughs> so that's it's fine though. You don't want to be behind in this format. Board recovery is a bitch. Yeah. Uh, Frostwolf warlords not the worst. I, I like we have that double imp shaman. gang, double imp gang boss. So Frostwolf warlord could work. Uh, yep. I like uh, that in Shaman. I guess the Battle Cry 4 drop should go on this one. Uh, we don't have Brand in this one. Yeah, we do. Oh, um. Wait, we, don't we? No. We put we it don't. in the Shaman because you wanted to do Rumbling oh, Elementals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I don't we'll like Rumbling element. I don't like that card. Yeah, I don't think Rumbling Elemental is good enough to build a deck around. Mm. Right, that's fine. So, yeah, Brand goes in this deck. Twilight Track? We need more 2 drops in this deck. We only have 7. We have so few in the deck, peer in any class. Yeah. Well, so I guess we play Crazed Alchemist. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we just got to have two twos. That works with Egg. Do you want Brand's yeah, Bronze Bear here? What? Brand Bronze Bear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's this deck. Right. Wait, this is, I'm only looking at Battle Cries right now. So I should delete that. Yeah, and just get regular twos in here. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, for somebody who has a reputation of might not being the most agreeable person. It feels like Raynad is actually cooperating pretty well with Firebat. What do you mm -hmm. think, Ike? Oh, definitely. I was not expecting that. A uh, little sad about that. I wasn't crazy about that crazy alchemist there, but I like the brand <laughs> if they choose to put it in. They didn't put it in right away. I don't know how that works with craze. Does it just... Brand? Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, well, actually, that's a really interesting thing because... what if you hit the egg? If you hit the egg, does it kill it and I then nothing so. else happens? That should happen. Based off the way But if you brand is. something else, it just, or if you create Occam is something that lives, it just swaps back and forth. Right. But then it's just a 2 2. Who wants that? Uh, well, I, you can understand what Tempo Storm is trying to go for. They want to go for early game curve with Warlock because that's what it excels at. You dump your, you dump your cards very quickly, yeah. and then you use the hero power to refill your hand later on. So definitely like that. What do you think about them cutting the uh, Druid and the Priest deck in the end and going with Hunter? Oh, well, yeah, the, the Jir and the Priest look kind of weak, and the Hunter's got some, it's got a decent game plan. It's got an aggro game plan. That's maybe all you need. One thing that really sticks out to me is that we have six different classes according to what we see right now. They still have all the time to change, 10 minutes, 
is enough to throw together a last minute deck replacement. But six different classes, hype. This is exactly what we wanted to see nice. based yeah. off of the way the sealed format was going to work. Is now we have a lot of diversity in how each class is going to mix and match with another person on the other team. Yeah, I was worried we're going to see some like mage and paladin domination, like right, with some priest ladder. thrown in there. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh gosh, but. Uh, ends up being a pretty good mix so far. Yeah, I like these Hunter decks. These I'm are the most surprised. interesting to me because you don't really see them work that often in Arena. It's often because Hunter is very linear with its plan, right? Yeah. What, what happens is you, you're because of the hero power, it does two damage to the hero every single time you hit it. So therefore, you can't control the board and you have to be very aggressive. However, you don't always get to be drafting aggressive in Arena. Sometimes exactly. you're just given like... Core Hound and... Or maybe you start with an <laughs> aggressive draft and then you yeah. get some good cards and you're like, eh, it doesn't really work. Right. Do I take a really slow card that's very defensive over something that's really weak but low value, low curve? It's, it's often this tough situation. But, you know, I, I like that they've taken their time and evaluated. They went down to the the you know the almost a halfway point they still didn't decide. Yeah. What well, was the I mean, we'll see if that holds them back. But it looks like they have some solid picks here. All right, well, you know, Team Liquid, they've been continuing to refine stuff. Temple Storm looks like they're pretty close, and Azumo is waiting with a member of Temple Storm to talk to them about how their draft's going so far. You want to wait? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, TJ got denied by Firebat. You know what? It's pretty intense right now, so we're going to send TJ over probably to Team Liquid's side to see if he can grab for a couple words. Temple Storm's all business as well. I know for some players on their team, they're not that happy that they keep getting underestimated hyped. And I know you're sometimes bashed into that as well. Why, why do you think people don't respect Temple Storm nearly as much as Cloud9, uh, Archon, Liquid? I think that's mostly Gara that's upset. Me and Eloise are always happy when people underate Temple Storm. We think it's a good thing. It's, it's a great, <laughs> it's a great advantage. Okay. Gara is always a little upset. He's like, wow, oh, I won WSA, no one remembered, or whatever that line is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we actually nicknamed Gara the most forgotten player in Hearthstone, which is. Uh, Kind of mean, but also very true. TJ is probably talking to Trump or a couple of the members here and trying to figure out what's going on. Team Liquid seems to have a lot of their heads pretty calm here. I think yesterday they were the team that practiced the most. Oh, they stayed they? after not. everybody else. Uh, they put in three or four more extra hours of drafting. Okay. Um, them and Tides of Time. Tides of Time really loves this format, so he yeah. stayed around personally just fun. to keep drafting. Uh, those four guys were the ones who stuck around after everyone was dismissed. Yeah, I heard Tides actually was doing some money matches that didn't go well for him. Who was he up against? Uh, he was up against uh, some some really handsome guy okay. with purple hair. Okay, it, it and didn't he lost. go too well for Tides, but thankfully, uh, you know, we were able to contain the rage a little bit. Okay. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it was really cool to see the players just enjoy the raw and like fun experience of deck building. I think that's something that people forget a lot of times because they look for optimized win rates. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they look for other people to for their advice as well. So I want to see what these guys are talking about, specifically with Liquid, to see how they're going to do the final touches on their decks coming to the final few minutes here. But the Nourish might help with that on the, yeah, on the some late game. Mm. I think it's fine. I don't care. think no. we're going to be able to... Do we have the we don't have extra five minutes. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's fine. Okay. Um, do all the decks have 30 cards right now? I think Mage has like one extra. All right. Um, I didn't... Let's see. Maybe one of us wants to get the Cavaldier Raider, the other one. Uh, let's... I think do you one. want it, Savic? Do you think, think you have double. enough jelly? I think double Cavaldier and, and Savic's deck is good. I think it would make cut a the, lot of sense, yeah. Cut the Boulder Fist of the Force and give it to me. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. you have to cut two cards, actually. Yeah. But I do need to keep another five, I think. Yeah. Um, I think maybe one. Do you think yeah, you need Polymorph Spire. 4? You have a lot of removal already. That's true. Yeah. Polymorph 4 isn't going to get too much value. And then add the quality. Yeah. All right. And then give me the... Uh... Boulder oh, wait. I already, have, I already have Wobbling Runs. Is Check Wobbling Runs better? Do you, which one do you... I mean, it does like, secure the Raptor yeah. thing, but... It'll be really sticky. No one okay. kills the runs. Do it. It's so but slow though, like when you play it, you have a 2 6 I have double sap as a thing. Do I have enough card That's draw? That's true, the sap. Uh, I have Burgles, I have double Hoarder, Gnomish. I have Thalnos, and I have double Gnomish. That's actually quite a bit, yeah. And if you yeah. loot orders and the plot mates, you can uh, I think it'll be okay. Raptor. Let me yeah. check uh, Druid. Druid. So, the curve is looking good. The curve is very I good. I think the card quality is a little low, but let's see, Innervate, Claw. Yeah, I mean, Innervate. especially like the two drops, they are pretty weak. They're reasonable. Let's see. Um, yeah. hmm. Should it be something like more? Hmm. How could we make it like faster? If you fall behind on the board, how do you come back? Is there any chance? Let's go back to the earlier cards. Yeah. Like go Druid. I I wonder if we missed any Druid cards. Probably not. Let's see. 
Grove Tender. Grove Tender is the only thing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not better than the others. I don't All think right, you can play any of these. Let's see neutrals. Uh, next page. Yep. Uh, uh, next page. Bad. What are you looking for <laughs> right now? <laughs> Looks like Team Liquid is done with their decks, but doing that ever... It's so it's so hard. It's like the ever frustrating part of trying to go for the extra win percentages because you know yeah. your deck is reasonable, but how can you make it the most optimized version given the pool that you have? Yeah, just min maxing, trying to minimize the weaknesses there they saw in the two jobs. But mm -hmm. I mean, Living Roots is insane. It's not a two job; it's one. It's yeah. even better. But it's like better than two jobs. It's insane. Yeah. And if you ask for these players, the number one thing that they would want more is not necessarily, I mean, obviously better cards. But if you can give them another wish list, they probably ask for more time because they would debate. Endlessly. Let's go ahead and go to, to Tempo Storm because they even were so intense that they couldn't even really take a t step away for the interview process. What are they saying? Uh, I think we should put at least one of the oozes in just for the sake of having more two drops. Okay, what are you cutting for it? Uh, actually, we should probably put the ooze in the deck that has the Argus. So maybe we can look at the Warlock two drops and switch one out. There's a lot of battle cry here. Uh, oh, great. Berserker we can cut. Yeah, Berserker we can switch because the Echoing Ooze synergizes with just the buffs, for example. Yeah. So is there another two drop we could take out for the other one? Not really, right? No. No. Okay, so then what are we looking at in the Hunter two drops, if there's one that can switch out? Because Hunter using Echoing Ooze could be good too, since it's so aggressive and Echoing Ooze is a pain in the ass to deal with. So... Um, uh, ship's Cannon. Ship's Cannon, yes. Replace Ship Cannon. Hunter has Direwolf Alpha that synergizes with the Ooze and stuff. Mm -hmm. So now we can put in those two threes in here, where the generic two three works better. Abani. Yeah, Mani Berserker. He put the bon a money in. A money? Oh, my bad. I didn't click it in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now our two drop curve actually makes sense. Our three drops, we got one, two, three, four, five, four drops. We got oh, still Sorry. a boatload of. We could probably. The only thing we can cut is late game or uh, pine size summoner. That's it. I think. I think the threes are too good. The three we have a good number of them. I think Saboteur or I don't, Control Tech. I don't want go. Saboteur. One of those two seems like underwhelming. I think mind control takes the most underwhelming. This card's really strong in arena, like high tier, high sure, tier sure. three drop. But I don't know if it's the same as yeah. arena. Yeah. Uh, then I guess I want to cut summoner. Oh, uh, I don't know. We got one, two, <laughs> three, four, five. Okay, okay. Let's keep summoning. We don't let's have that many two drops. Let's, let's cut cogmaster. Let's cut cogmaster. Uh, I don't. I like snowball on the board early, man. All right. I like it. I think the the questionable ones are like Mukla's Champion and Culvadir. Inspire cards. Okay. I don't. I'm not Let's feeling. Let's cut Raider. Sure. Mm -hmm. I like Champion. Champion can win the game on its own. Okay. Side. Sure. Then we're left with like Force Tank Max being the weird one. If you don't have board and you play Force Tank Max, the Divine Shield's useless. So that's like a point there. Uh, other than that, I like all of our other cards really. It's a matter of like how much late game do you want. This deck's curve is super low. Mean. Uh, we can, we can, well, we can <coughs> Temple Storm out. is wrapping up their final touches, but it seems like they've made it pretty safely within the time frame given. Now that their decks have taken shape, uh, one thing that I missed while glossing over was that Temple Storm has Dr. Boom. Oh, yeah. Dr. Boom, of course, great. But it actually what? didn't work. Strife Guy went like 03, right? Yeah, he did go 03. Yeah, so it's not always the way to go. Um, yeah. I re I seem, they seem to have the opposite problem of uh, Liquid, where instead of not having enough two drops or three drops, they just had too many twos and threes. They're like, right. which ones do we cut? The least bad ones. They passed up the classic Mana Wraith Feral Spirit combo. A little sad. It's really mm. solid. It's so solid. Um, I'm glad that <laughs> Rain had... Mana Wraith Feral combo. That used to be in the oh, yeah. meta like it was a solid. year and a half ago. It was right? solid. Um, yeah. We saw... Uh, Firebat tried to talk them out of the Inspire cards, which I actually think are pretty good, especially in Shaman, especially Mucklos. I'm glad that Raynad got them to yeah. keep Mucklos champion. Well, let's go ahead and see as we count down the final minute of this entire draft. Let's tune into Team Liquid. I think we got most of the good cards. I think we're good. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't All right, save him. Okay. Bottom. <sighs> Uh oh, uh, is it gonna work? Well, sure. we caught the the most important point, which okay, was the, yeah. the sigh of relief. I yeah, suppose. I was expecting a lot more tense. Uh, yeah, discussion like there. oh my god, just whatever, just put it in, just put yeah. it in. You know, that that kind of dialogue is always common in these types of scenarios. But looks like both teams have finished at a comfortable amount of space. I mean, sure, there's always that 
last second uncertainty of yeah i don't like oh liquid's body language they look a little bit okay dog smiling now i like it but they looked oh, yeah. a little uneasy maybe maybe we'll Raynad's see. doing classic Raynad. what's going oh he's taking pictures okay yeah you want to take pictures just as proof because you know one of these things is that this client is extremely new so <laughs> we're always figuring out the small kinks of what happens yeah. plus it's just faster to build the decks yeah, yeah. or he's taking a selfie and posting it on instagram yeah slash other social sites to improve you know his his internet yeah, at tempo right ed to find that at tempo. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy well uh taking a look at the classes i didn't actually get to evaluate who from tempo storm is assigned to each class um if i were to guess i would assume that eloise would probably stick to warlock that's actually that's the class that she's yeah. most known for uh, i would also assume that Raynad would like to play the hunter but i know that Firebat also loves playing aggressive decks, so yeah. perhaps he might take the Hunter. I mean, Firebat's kind of known for Elemental Shaman. He, when, when Purple first made that deck, he was like really big into it. So he, I could see him on that or the Warlock. Eloise plays Warlock. Raynad plays Warlock. It's really up in the it's air. It's true. Raynad also says his favorite class is Warlock as well. Um, all kinds mm -hmm. of variants. In fact, that's what his claim to fame is uh, for, for his, his uh, history in Hearthstone. So, I mean, I, I really like a lot of what we see here. Diversity, a lot of power levels. I think each of them seem to be having their own uniqueness about it. But I, I, am, I mean, I'm not really trying to be biased here at all, but I think Temple Storm actually has an edge here in terms of the decks. Yeah, I like their, bex their decks better, even though they took like a long time to decide and then they like shooed Asmo away. Like, <laughs> oh, wait, wait, we need all this time. Yeah. But it actually worked out pretty cleanly with the time. That's there wasn't right. any rushing at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and some teams, they finish very quickly. I mean, you look at Tides and Strife and Hafu, they were very efficient and they made their decisions very, very fast. Uh, but some teams, I mean, Trump is a very notorious player for being able to take as every second that he can get, both in the games and outside of it. Yeah, uh, Dog being a player notorious for playing extremely fast right. at times. It's so much yin and yang with Liquid. I love yeah. it just because of how they mix with each player and whatnot. Um, so right now we're, what we're going to do is the process of building each of these decks. Uh, we're using an, a non-Hearthstone client, so a lot of people might be looking, oh, I want to do this. Is, where in the game can I do mm -hmm. it? It's, it's not a feature within it. We actually built it ourselves, uh, and we're going to be building the decks. And from there on, we're going to be having a round robin best of one for a total of nine games. So each player will play another per person on the other team one time, and that's three times three is nine. Yeah. Right, right? Hey, yeah. Let me just one check. <laughs> All right, yeah, it, it checks out. It's good. You got it. All right, well, uh, I'm taking a look at um, how we're going to be able to play through here. Uh, wh what we do is we take the top two teams to advance through. Um, so if you look at uh, Archon, they're actually in a pretty good spot. Yeah. Winning your first game is a lot because we take match score first. However, if there happens to be a three-way tie, let's say, for example, one team goes 3-0, we will have an opportunity for a three-way tie of three teams to have one win and two losses. Therefore, we use this game score to indicate. So even if you know you lost, let's say hypothetically Temple Storm gets completely flipped on and they go 0-6 in the first two games, they still want to win the last three ones as best as they can for yeah. the game score. Yeah. Plus, uh, don't forget the final teams get to redraft. So like, say Archon, which kind of looked like they had a weak draft, but I really like their teamwork. Mm -hmm. Should they make it to the finals, they'll get a new draft, which will probably be better, and they might just crush it. It's awesome to see Archon be able to work well as a team, too, just because, you know, Ar Amnesiac, he's a very new member to the team. He's 15 years old, and a lot of people always use that as the most interesting point about him, but they, they don't actually see that Amnesiac has been a very big influencer behind the scenes mm -hmm. to make Archon a very successful team in the tournaments. He actually built a lot of decks that Amaz piloted or yeah, he, even some of the other p players on the team as well. Yeah, he coached Amaz on Druid a ton. Um, uh, Amnesia is a known as like one of the best Druid players in America, if not That's the right. best. That's right. I'll take a look at uh, Liquid and Temple Storm, too. Their individual members are also famous for a lot of things. I think uh, we, we talked about Warlock for Eloise and Raynad. Yeah. And, and Firebat, to a certain extent. In fact, off of the back of Zoo, uh, mm -hmm. that was a deck that Firebat became a world champion of. Uh, however, he is also known for his incredible versatility. While Eloise is more of a specialist, she's one of the first people who tell you that she doesn't really play much of Rogue, for example, or Hunter. You know, mm -hmm. she, she said those are like her least favorite classes to play. Uh, Firebat's a guy who's mixed and matched everything, and Raynan is a player who tries to mix and match yeah. everything. Yeah, Raynan seems like uh, someone kind of will pick up yeah. the slack on whatever's the hardest. He'll just play it. Yeah, you really think so? I think uh, Firebat actually will probably take that. Load. Okay, just because I think he wants to disrupt the chemistry the least. If I were to just okay, go ahead. he's the new guy, but at the same time, he's doing a really good job of it. Raynad, at the same time, uh, this is something that he's really known for playing in these kinds of formats. That's what he really takes pride in. We're looking at Raynad's POV right now of how he's building the decks and taking a, a more examined look without that condensed deck builder client. Some really quality cards here. If Raynad's playing the Shaman, 
there can be some huge snowball potential with just those four one drops alone. Yeah, how many? We got the tunnel trog, and that's actually quite a few overload. Stormforged, Ancestral, and the Feral Spirits. Yeah, Fire Guard. Fire Guard, of course. Oh, that's that's like a great card. That's yeah. fantastic. I mean, Fire Guard has potential to be very average, mm -hmm. the four six for four, but. Uh, with an overload, of course, drawback. But at the same time, when you combine it with Tunnel Trog, you combine it with the fact that you can also have a 7-6 on turn 4. Really awesome stuff. The things that you were pointing out, that the Shaman doesn't have too much extended late game. Actually, I think it does, because like you're going to take control with those aggro cards. And mm -hmm. if you remember the original Elemental, or the Mech Shaman, it had like a strong early game, but then it curved into like Boom and Rag, and it had like strong, and uh, of course, Fire Elemental. But this deck has the Muckles Champion. Like, how are you not mm -hmm. going to have board control Good with point. this early curve? You're going to get some totems down, should, like, because you're just going to be so far ahead on board, and then you just Muckless Champion. It's true. Actually, it's a very good point, Hype. Muckless Champion is often looked at not as a five mana play all the time, but also a seven mana play, because yeah. you play it, and then you want to hero power immediately to get the bonus effect of it. That's part of the reason why people say, you know, they say negative things about these kinds of cards, because they're not truly the costed ones that you see. Stormwheel exactly. Sniper is not tr truly a two drop yeah. all the time. It's usually what you want to play on turn four. Same thing with Cavaldi Raider. It's usually something that you want to combine for seven mana. But that's the best part about these cards is they're flexible. They're two drops or they're four drops, for example, in the case of Steamroll uh, mm -hmm. Sniper. You know, what do you think about their choice of Mind Control Tech versus Saboteur versus cutting both or one? Of yeah, the other? Mind Control Tech's a great card, but I'm surprised that it works best in this deck versus their other decks. You'd think it would be better in, like, the Warlock deck, for example. I think they're afraid of falling behind on board with Shaman, which is one of the worst hero powers to climb back on board exactly. outside yeah. of... Hunter, probably, I think. Okay. So, you know, with those with those totems, they don't actually do much except for the Searing Totem, which is a 1-1 one, one token, and then they just get abused. Uh, of course, the exception is if a Taunt Totem happens to protect a high-value minion or if you mm -hmm. heal something with that Healing Totem, so that way it stays a little bit alive. I'm loving some of these Tempo cards, though, that can really come out, though. Bomb Lobber, one of my favorite cards uh, oh, the in the non great. Form. Yeah. No Fire Elementals, that's a little weak. It's not quite as good. That's true. Fire Elemental, probably... One of the most insanely high value, um, was it, is it a basic card or a soulbound card? I think it's a, I think it's a soulbound card. Yeah, pretty sure. There's no, I'm sorry for, unfortunately that ship's cannon is just a 2-3, there's no pirates in there. Yeah. Frost so, Elemental, always saw, it's no Fire Elemental, but it's the next best thing. I wonder if they cut that Force Tank Max, they didn't, so they end up keeping it. So this rounds out Shaman for Raynad, so if Raynad's going to be on Shaman, that means Fire Bat will probably be on the Hunter, which yeah. makes the most sense given their MOs. Oops, I wrote Hunter, Hunter. <laughs> Good show, by the way. Uh, so Firebat's going to be on the Hunter. So Eloise being on the Warlock, which fits more of her I style. Think, and is I know is Raynad really doing this? He's going to make a golden... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's Raynad in a nutshell. Yep. Uh, it's, it's not just salt, but it's also plenty of gold mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. come along with it. There you go. In terms of his deck. He crafted a golden yep. pint-sized summoner. Spot. Well, it's not going away in standard anytime soon, so I guess you That's can true. find use for it. I can Who knows? I don't, mm, maybe. All right, well, I, I'm curious to see what Team Liquid and how they're building out. I think Savitz is in the middle, who we're anchoring right now. Uh, he's going to be on the Mage, which they were debating a lot on. I think one of the things that they were saying very early on is the Mage would lack a lot of good value cards. Mm -hmm. You know, Mage is really known for having very efficient, simple cards that actually have a lot of flexibility. For example, Fireball is so good at both ending the game or controlling the board, yeah, climbing you back to re remove or even just be even in parity of tempo. It seems like a simple card, but it's actually very complex, flexible removal. Yes. Did they have a Flame Strike? I think I that's one of the hardest questions to answer. Flame Strike is it would be in the deck already, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> actually, no, he's building it. Okay, he's just building it in order. He, he did browse over it though. You know, part of the thing about this format is that Amnesiac identified it in the previous team chat, but if you didn't catch it, AoE is actually a very hot commodity. Mm -hmm. You don't have yeah. many ways to impact the board simultaneously with a lot of minions. So Flame Strike, which deals four damage to every minion, you're not going to see that often. Even like cards like Ar Arcane Explosion, you can make a case for sometimes to grab early game tempo against a lot of weak minions that trade all the time. Like These cards are premium in this format because you, you get so few cards of the classic and basic, which is where all the spells are usually are. Exactly. Like in Paladin, for example, you used to like, oh, they had like double uh, True Silver and double the 3-4 that makes the 3-3. I forget the name. But they had no Consecration, which in Constructed is the weaker card, but mm -hmm. in this format is extremely strong. And they just we saw a team pass over Paladin because of that. Yeah, the, the I mean, Paladin itself has a lot of high-value cards, but again, think about where they're all packaged. It's usually Goblins versus Gnomes, and mm -hmm. 
I guess you have Keeper of Voldemort in League of Explorers. Yeah. If you if you open up Mysterious Challenger, that's great. But all the secrets outside of Avenger are packed into the very classic uh, and basic set. So okay. you don't really get those guarantees. That's the Calvadier. I knew they weren't talking about the two one. I was like, if you don't play the Camel, you're not talking about the two one. But they're talking about how wanting both the Calvadiers. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but the Inspire gain two two. So this is like yeah. Yeah, this uh, this actually feels like yeah, this Pretty feels like decent. one of Dog's Inspire Mage decks. Yeah, you know, uh, Inspire Mage was something that was experimented with a little bit, just because the Mage Hero power has one of the best uses mm -hmm. of versatility. Again, you can not only hit your opponent's face or their minions, you can also hit your own minions if you want to enrage it or if you want to activate something. There are situations where the Mage Hero power is one of the most flexible. Yeah. Definitely the most flexible. And then when you stack all these Inspire effects, it just gets better. Whereas it doesn't really work with Rogue. People compare it to right. Rogue, but you can't really double Dagger, you know? Yep. Uh, I want to talk also about something that we can go ahead and discuss while we see that Savitz is done with his deck, so he's going to start building some of his teammates so that we can avoid the switcheroos. Okay. Um, well, we're going to, you know, there's some golden ratios in Hearthstone. Uh, it's not necessarily what you think. The golden ratio usually applies to perspective and viewing angles, but... Golden ratios are like, for example, in, in any kind of deck that wants to curve in a standard mid-range format between turns one to six or seven, you want around six or seven two mana minions. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why you want minions as well is because you want to be very proactive on board. If you have a lot of two mana spells, like say Flame Cannon, you're just reacting. And it, in the instance where your opponent doesn't have anything on turn two and you can't react, then you pass. And all of a sudden you miss your tempo and your opponent's two mana ahead of you because they got to develop something else. Exactly. It's like you mentioned. The spells are kind of a commodity. You don't want to use them unless you have to. Right. So gen you, know, you generally want to value minions a little bit higher than spells. That said, you are looking at a class which is highly dependent on how spells make it work. In fact, spells is a big reason why you play Rogue outside of anything else. And no, it is not, it's not a rebroadcast. This is live. Live yeah. as live can be. And we probably have to make sure we turn on busy mode. Good job. Yeah, Savitza is on my account there. Shout out to my boy there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to your boy too. Savitza spy for Team Liquid. Yeah. All right. So it uh, looks like we finally have an opportunity to do some interviews. Trump is done building his decks. Azumo is waiting with the mayor of Value Town to hear his words for his 2016 Team Brawl campaign. Am I looking there? You can, yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, I'm here with uh, Trump, of course, from uh, Team Liquid. And uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on how you feel like your, your draft went. So overall, how do you feel? Uh, overall, we did a few practices. Uh, I don't think this one was stellar, but we made the best of what we had. All right, well, you used to play on uh, Team Liquid Value back in the day in the Ishian Fight Night days. Um, but, you know, there's a couple new faces like Dog. How does it feel being in sort of a team environment uh, with these two guys here? Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, Dog and Savitz, I've played with Dog before in Team Archon League. We formed the Value Town team, and it's nice to kind of be an honorary member of Team Liquid for the day. Uh, I love working with both people. One of the reasons why I actually attended this tournament was because Savitz came, and Savitz is an awesome person, really enjoy working with these creative deck builders. I kind of bring the arena experience, so it's, so it's good synergy between us. So speaking of the arena experience, I just want to get your thoughts on how you think uh, those skills translate into this format. It's completely unique and different. Uh, do you think being uh, sort of an arena expert helps you out a lot in the deck building process? Yeah, it certainly does. If you just play Constructed, there are a couple. There are quite a few cards which are almost Constructed level, but because Constructed only takes the best 30 cards, you just include the best cards. You know, Shredder kicks out a lot of the viable four drops, but here... Uh, when you are a little bit low on four drops and you don't have Shredder, you start to see a lot of uh, different decks, or a lot of different cards be able to fill the void for it. And each one of these decks has a certain four drop where it's most suited. I think we distributed our cards to the classes to the best of our ability. All right, thanks. It's great to get your insight on that. I won't take up too much of your time. I know you have some prep to do with your deck. So uh, thanks for speaking to me. Uh, good luck in your match. And we'll send it back over to Dan and Hyped on the desk. All right. Well, that was Trump yeah. being able to take a quick step with TJ. Thank you so much, TJ. He'll be back later to cast more action. This is pretty much the wrap-up of our beginning draft process here, Hyped. You got to hear with Trump. He says he feels like we distributed very equally. Yeah. And that's that's one strategy. There's well, also other strategies. was that he yeah. was upset with the draft a little bit, which yeah. is like the main strategy. But I am I do think teamwork, like with the play, can actually make up for a bad draft. So I will be interested to see like if they can, you know, as a team sort of outplay the other team. Now, one thing that we were just mentioning as well at the very beginning of the show is that there are multiple ways you can play this. Even though you do distribute, 
And there is that element of, you know, a little bit of socialist behavior of combining all your, uh, your, your decks and trying to make them all equally powerful. There are legitimate ways of like, well, you know, I think this deck's going to be a little bit weaker, but we just try to sneak a couple wins here and there. Mm -hmm, exactly. And we really make some of these two decks just like all out good. And we've seen that actually happen in some testing phases. We've seen that happens in other formats of different games. And that's also completely legitimate if you just want to win the majority of your matches, which is ultimately what matters. Because you can't guarantee that you 9-0, but you generally still want to be high, have high percentages of how you're able to match up against other people's decks. Yeah, I think it's important to note too that the... Uh Sometimes it's like you pick. It's like important to pick three different strategies. So maybe aggro, mm -hmm. mid range, and value. That way, the neutrals can go to like the aggro neutrals can go to one class, mm -hmm. value ones can go to the other class, etc. All right. Well, we have another interview lined up with a player who is one of the most interesting to follow for this event. It is Firebat, representing Team Temple Storm, just for one event. Let's see what he has to say with the Zuma. Thank you very much, Danny. I'm here with uh, Firebat, uh, who's playing for Team Temple Storm throughout this tournament. I just want to get your thoughts on, on your draft. How do you, you feel overall uh, about the three decks that your team has created? Uh, I feel pretty confident about the three decks the team has been able to put together. Uh, we had a few practice runs before, and things were a little shaky then. But since then, we've really talked things over, figured out what we valued out of the draft, which was uh, kind of having a low curve, being able to get the board immediately, because we've noticed things in the format. Removal spells are pretty hard to come by. In Arena, it seems like you're more often to get like Flame Strikes or Consecrates or something like that. And in this format, oftentimes you weren't able to get any of those cards. So we really valued getting onto the board as fast as possible and then just never losing it throughout the rest of the game. So if our opponent is lucky enough to find a bunch of AoEs in all their decks, we're going to struggle. But odds are in our favor that they're not going to be able to do that since they're just not that common. Yeah, we saw a little bit of that in the match before that you guys weren't able to watch, but uh, it was pretty cool to see how that played out. I want to get your thoughts on uh, playing with, with Tempo Storm, because, of course, uh, at the moment, our team list, but um, Raynad offered to, you the spot to play in, in this one. So what are your thoughts in general on playing with uh, the two Temple Storm players and, uh, and your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that they're both great players, and I really appreciate them giving me the opportunity to even play here. Because coming into it, uh, I thought I wasn't going to be able to play in this event at all. So I was pretty disappointed about that. And uh, they contacted me and said, hey, we got this spot you can play with us. And I was like, that's amazing. I can't wait to be there. Can't wait to play. This is a really cool format, and I would have hated to miss out on it. Yeah, it's a, a really cool format. I want to get uh, your predictions on how you think your team will do, because you guys don't have too much experience playing together. I know all the other players don't, but maybe they've talked a little bit more. And you're going up against your former team, Archon. So uh, how do you feel your team stacks up against the other teams that are here? Uh, I think we definitely have individual skills that pretty much match all the other teams just about. I think that's pretty safe to say among everybody. And I feel like we took the drafting process pretty seriously and we had practice runs. So I feel exceptionally confident. Everyone's been participating. There's never been like no lone wolves or anything that really want to do their own thing. Everyone's taken input. We've made compromises when we needed to make compromises. So I feel like they're a really easy group of people to work with and we're going to have success. All right, well, good luck in your match. It won't take any more of your time. Uh, I believe you guys are about to get started. So thanks for talking with me, thanks. and we'll send it back over to the desk with Dan and George. Well done, TJ. Thank you so much for that. We're about to get underway with Temple Storm versus Team Liquid for our second match here at the Red Bull Team Arena, or Team Brawl, excuse me. I'm just getting mixed up with some of the formats here. We want to take a look at uh, how it's going to match up person by person. I believe Raynad will be playing Savits to start things off. We have mm -hmm. the captains always match that up. Makes sense. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, mix and match from there on. So uh, I, I think that's what the case is. However, I do believe that right now we're also on a schedule of how things are because ultimately they're going to be mixing and matching around the round robin. So it doesn't matter who you start playing because mm -hmm. in the end you're going to play everybody. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. One thing that is also important too is that you start seeing that players communicate within team members a lot. And what they start doing is they start exchanging information of what they see. So yeah. Firebat mentioned, uh, and very astutely so, that there's not a lot of AoE. However, if you do see a Flame Strike, if you do see a Blizzard, if you do see something very radical like an Akanai Soul Priest and Circle of Healing combination, uh, then you're going to pass that information for the next game. So every single game, every single heat continues to develop in more information about your opponent, helping them make better decisions. And that's where that team element really comes into play. Yeah, I did hear Amaz like calling out what cards were in certain decks. Yeah. Maybe the other team was doing it too, but you just didn't hear them as much. But yeah, Archon was definitely being really good about that. Yeah. And, you know, they do have reference to help each other, like, make sure they know what's in each other's decks. Um, but, you know, I, what I really love of is the fact that uh, some, some people were just splitting 
like uh, maybe one Lily Squire in each deck, maybe one mm -hmm. Chow here, one Chow there. Uh, but some people are like, no, I want to favor consistency. This deck's trying to do this game plan. I want to really be able to take this kind of overall broad macro approach. And that's going to be really important here, as it looks like we're going to take uh, just a couple seconds here as the players are going to get ready. Do you have any predictions uh, outside now that we've gotten to take a more in-depth look? We were saying initially who we're mm -hmm. favoring, but yeah. if, you, if like you were to kind of go ahead and give a score, what would it be hyped? Tempo's decks look really strong. The Hunter, I don't know, but it looks like the Shaman and the Warlock are at least going to get two wins each. So that's at least four. Let's say six to three. Six to three? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say five to four. I think it's going to be a really close one. In the end of the first match, it looked like... Archon was pulling away from Cloud9. They only had two wins compared to the four. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. well, if it's another 2-1, it'd be a 6-3. And 6-3 is a very big split, but 5-4 is more manageable if you yeah. lose. So that's definitely what you want. And make sure to let us know what you guys want and how you guys are enjoying the event. Make sure to tweet at Red Bull Esports and tweet at Honda. Thank them so much for sponsoring the event as well. Uh, we, you know, we were able to do this for the first time, and hopefully we can do more of it. I think we're definitely having some growing pains, but we're also learning what really makes this format really interesting is the deck building, being able to explore everything, and ultimately hearing the teams talk to yeah. each other. That's what the really cool part is. Oh, yeah, I love hearing the teams talk to each other. Hopefully we can get more of that this round. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a look at how everything will play out. After this match, we're going to have four more uh, to have everyone play out. And then we have the Grand Finals, but it's a one-day event. So make sure everybody to tweet out what's going to be happening here because we're not going to have a second day for, like, the semifinals and the finals. Uh, it's just four teams. It's going to be one event uh, for one day for the event. And we're going to have $3,000 go to the winner as well as these customized DX Ratio chairs, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you get to choose whatever you want on the chairs is going to be pretty sweet. What, what would you customize? My chair to be hyped. Well, definitely green. That's my favorite color. But on the back, I was actually thinking green, about it. And I could, yeah, green okay. for the colors. But actually, I've been struggling. Like, what would I put on it? Would I put hyped? Would I put George? Who's gonna see it? Like, I'm not gonna see it. I'm sitting in the chair, right? right. So it's kind of hard. Have you, you thought you about it? You can be whoever you want to be. Man. Exactly. You can have Batman on the back. Exactly. Yeah. Which would, wouldn't surprise me, Hype, because you're a very mysterious person. I mean, I haven't actually seen too much of you around outside of DreamHack and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I know I still I still see you laddering here time to time. Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Uh, being able to do it. But I'm really excited for it, especially considering the, the difference in formats that we get to see uh, also in just this event as well. Um, you know, I, I also was able to take a test drive with some of the stuff with the, uh, the Civic. I actually did a really funny oh, series cool. of commercial shoots. Uh, I'm, I really hope that they didn't show it for this broadcast, though, because it's, it's kind of like classic Frodan. A lot of people know me for some of the, 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 the shameless things that I've done in the past on the Internet, mm -hmm. which will live forever. And I know exactly my kids, what you're talking kids about. will see it. Oh, do you? Yes. Unfortunately. Uh, let's hope that never gets aired here, just because that would be a little bit embarrassing. Um, but I'm told that uh, we're waiting for the players to come back, and it looks like we're probably going to end up having them come back right now in just a second. But if not, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to start Tempo Storm versus Liquid, the second match here at the Team Brawl.